Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Question of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, taking his trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And then, on your Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. The principle of the best education possible for our children has been one of the basic cornerstones of our nation. But the ever-increasing enrollment in elementary schools has resulted in poor educational conditions in many communities across the country. Most important, there is an insufficiency of elementary school teachers. Teaching is an occupation that is more attractive now than ever before, since there is a growing public interest in education and measures are being taken to improve schools. Such a career offers exceptional opportunities for intelligent, imaginative young men and women who are now in college. The lack of teachers is only one side of this problem. Some places require additional school buildings. Others need more equipment, textbooks, and personnel. If these problems are to be met and solved, the cooperation of every citizen is a must. See what you can do. Better schools build better communities. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston sat at a corner table in the notorious 303 Cafe in Skagway. He was not in uniform. In fact, his rough trail clothes and a few days' growth of beard made him practically unrecognizable. The skipper of the Arctic Queen was uncertain for a moment, and there was still doubt on his face when he walked up to the table. You are Sergeant Preston, aren't you? That's the love, Captain. Sit down. I'm sorry. It's all right. No one heard you. Sorry, Skagway, no? My name's Forty Mile Bill. Oh, I get it. The force is pretending you didn't do it. Exactly. What's the case? I've been watching the man for the past week. Coming up at the bar, and he's uh, looking at us now. It was wasn't during a few minutes ago. Fast features, black eyes, black face. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. He wanted to book passage back to the state. Told him I was sailing for St. Michael's in Alaska. Then he wanted to go there. Uh-huh. Very interesting. What'd you tell him? But I tell everybody. The other queen carries no passage. That's fine. The passage money doesn't pay for the damage, baby, Sergeant. Please don't call me a passage, not really. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd better be on my way. Oh, no, there's no need. I don't want to mess things up for you, but I would like to talk. Why don't you come out to the ship tomorrow morning? We don't sail tomorrow night. That's fair. That's fine. See you then, Mr. Bill. Go on, Captain. As soon as the captain left, Roy Chase forced his way through the crowd to the sergeant's table and sat down. They called you 40 mile bill, don't they? Same people do. I'm Roy Chase. Harry. You're a friend of Captain Ann, huh? Hello, friend. I'd like to book passage on it, Chip. He's sailing for St. Michael. I know. Well, what do you want to go there? Well, uh, the main thing is I want to get out of here. There's no other ship sitting at least two weeks. I was there for carry passengers. I know, that's what he said. But I thought a friend of his might change his mind. Oh, well, I don't think so. That'd be a nice nice minute for you. How much? Five hundred. And we'd pay five hundred a piece for the ship. That's all right. Yeah. You in trouble at some time? No, nothing like that. He said five hundred a piece. How many of you are there? Just myself and another guy. Did you see what you can do for us? That way. Going out to the ship tomorrow morning. Well, look, I'll meet you here tomorrow afternoon. If the answer is yes, I can finish up my business by about 10 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll be ready to go on board at 11. That's an hour before sailing. I don't know anything about sailing, though. It's midnight. Five 
five hundred dollars, sir. Let's see what I can do. Thanks a lot. Carson allowed Roy to leave the cafe. Then he started to rise, but he felt a light touch on his shoulder. What's the best, Hanson? A girl slipped into the chair beside him. Hanson, you have the wrong man. Oh, I wouldn't if you got rid of that finish on your face. I've been watching you, Bill. Yes, so? I'm Marion Hope. Yes, sir. I just wanted to give you a friendly warning. You're a dog pusher, aren't you? Yes. Uh, stick the dogs and leave the coyotes alone. Coyotes? Roy Chase. He's asking for trouble and we'll get it. Don't get mixed up with him or you'll be in trouble too. I remember that. Good. I like you, dear. I'd like to see you around for a while. I must make a living. There are better ways than playing with fire. Oh, good one. <laughs> Maybe I will. When the right time comes. Yes, keep away from the <laughs> The mad girl's coat was sable. She hid carelessly over her shoulders and walked to the end of the long room where she entered the manager's office. So, the sergeant left the cafe. He headed directly for his cabin, and when he opened the door, Shane greeted him affectionately. <laughs> Hello, Shane. I'm sorry to get you locked up this way, boy. But you're too well known to be running the streets in the daytime. Now that it's dark, sir, we'll have a nice long walk. Come on, come on. <laughs> Go to the captain's thing. At the word captain, the great dog looked up into his master's face and boxed his understanding. <laughs> then he trotted ahead of the sergeant through the back streets of the town until he reached the cabin next door to the marine barracks. <laughs> Good dog. You've learned the way fast. This was Captain Hawk's cabin. The captain was in command of the company of marines who had taken over the enforcement of law and order in Skagway. The door opened. Okay. Let's have a talk with you, Captain. Come in, come in. Ah, a fine dog. No better lead than the you, son. I can believe it. So what's in your mind? You've uh, had a letter from Inspector Conrad of the Northwest Mounted Police. And? The sergeant reached into the pocket of his pocket and pulled out his gold whistle. He handed it to the captain. Very handsome. It's engraved on it. Sergeant Preston. The inspector told me this would be my uh, identification. Right, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you, Captain. You said you might be calling on us for assistance. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can, but there were no details in the letter. That's the case. An investigating the murder of Roger Morton, who was caught in White House two weeks ago, 50,000 gold was stolen from his face. He had only one lead. A man named Roy Chase. You suspect he committed the murder? No, Captain. We suspect that he knows who did it, though. The night after the killing, he'd been looking quite a bit, and he told the bartender that the force would never solve the case, but he was the only one who could do that, and he intended to cash in on what he did. You held him for questioning? No, so he decided to guess it. He hoped that he might lead us to the murderer. Oh, the ass? That's it. I followed him down here, and I've been watching him ever since. I believe he's made contact with the killer through some third person, and right now it seems to stand to fix it for him to get out of the country. But how? And he had it clean tomorrow night. I'm supposed to be arranging the passage. I see, and you want us to arrest the killer. And I still don't know who the man is. By this time tomorrow night, I may, and when I do need your help, I'll need a task. I came here tonight to settle on the means of contacting you. Blow this whistle. We'll come running. I'll alert my men. I may be too far away for the whistle. If I am, I'll use King. The dog? When I say captain, he'll head straight for the cabin. <laughs> you what? I taught him to do it during the week he's been here. He shows up without me, just follow him, and he'll lead you to me. Good. Here's your whistle. That might come in handy, too. Well, you know what it is. Well, better get back on the job. Good luck, Captain. Thanks, Captain. I've been warned that I may need it. Yes. By whom? Her name is Marion Hope. Oh, the girl who used to sing at the 303. The Lady in Sable. I, uh, I'd like to meet her. I think you probably will. Come on, sir. <laughs> the following morning, the sergeant paid his visit to the Arctic Queen. That afternoon, he met Roy Chase in the 303. The dark man was nervous. The sergeant noticed that his hand shook a little as he lit a cigarette. Well, Bill, what can you make out? I said... Really? I said so, didn't I? Fine. Perfect. Thanks a lot. I expected more than six. Oh, five hundred. Well, I, I don't happen to have it on me right now. You know, I was afraid of that. But I will have it. You'd better... Skip is doing this as a personal favor. Of course. And just to make sure I get paid off, he doesn't take you on board until I say the word. I see. I'll take you down to the waterfront. I'll signal the ship. I'll send a boat in for you and your friend. It's all set. 
As soon as I get my 500. I have to go to Dyer to get it. Dyer? That's only two miles. Now, hey, you got a dog for me, aren't you? Oh, hey. well, you could drive him. And you could drive me and my friend back here. How about it? I'll pay you a hundred extra for the trip. See the deal? What do we start? Not until dark. I'll meet you here. Good sir. You have a gun? Yes. Where? My friend will be carrying a lot of money. It'll be a dangerous trail. There have been a lot of holdups. I, uh, we might need an extra gun. You never can tell. <laughs> Continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the leadoff man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person? See the wall of home runs? See the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. The palace was the largest building in Dyer's three story house. There was a cafe on the first floor with a hotel above. The entrance to the hotel was up a flight of stairs on the outside of the building. The sergeant stopped his team in front of the cafe. Hey, 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 hey. hey mate, good time. It's only 8 o'clock. Yes. There's no need to unharness the team. I won't be long. Do wait in the cafe. Very good. Upstairs, the hotel? It'll take you two hours to get back. It's supposed to be at the warehouse at 11 o'clock. Warehouse? In the hand, it's right there. It's just been waiting out there. And... Oh. All right. I won't be long. Sergeant watched Chase climb the stairs to the hotel entrance. And then he unharnessed him. He looked through the street for us and boys up in case. They said Chase was asking for trouble and they'd be waiting for him up there. I'd better go after him. You stay here, boy. Watch the team. <laughs> the door at the top of the steps opened into a hall. The hall led to the front of the building. There was a small lobby there. A girl dressed in an evening gown was talking to the clerk. He would have been more at home in the prize ring than behind the desk. The girl turned. It was Marion. Her dark eyes flashed as she walked straight toward the sergeant. What are you doing here? I should ask the same question. There'd be nothing wrong with my life. I've been downstairs and I live here. Oh, what were you doing in Skagway yesterday? Strictly business. I had an appointment with Diamond Smith. He wants to sign it. He's in a musical. That doesn't matter. After what I told you, you came over here with Roy Chase. He's trying to tell me. Of course. What did he ask for it today? He didn't ask anyone. He nodded to Dad and went down the corridor. Still, he hired me to drive him from Skagway. Anything wrong in there? Is that all? Oh, I'm going to drive him back. He won't be needed. Get out of here and get out of here fast. He hasn't paid me yet. You know, I'm warning you as a friend. If you're a friend, you should tell me a little more. What sort of trouble is Roy heading for? He's made some enemies. Huh? Huh? Black men, I think. You think? Yes, I have nothing to do with such people, but I keep my eyes and my ears open. A good house, too. It's a tough country. I agree. Who are such people, now? Mark Hanley, for one. He owns this hotel in the cafe downstairs. Staff who works behind the desk. Roy Chase and the man in 17. Who's the man in 17? None of my business, and it's none of yours. Oh, that seems to have left. Probably going to tell Mark that you're here. Get out of here, boy. I have an investment in Roy, man. Forget it. That, that sounded like a shot. It was. Now do you believe me? I'm going to take a look at him, 17. Don't be fooled. I'll see you later. You're asking for it. Really? The corridor was dark and narrow. There were bedroom doors on either side. Sergeant moved cautiously. 
There was no sound coming from any of the rooms. No light showing under any door except at the very end of the corridor. Halfway down, the sergeant stopped. He smelled gunpowder. He lit a match. The door at his right was number 17. Quickly, the sergeant blew out the match and tried the door. It was unlocked. He opened the door slowly. The room seemed to be empty. He stepped inside and closed the door. Two more steps and he touched something. He knelt down and struck another match. The man on the floor was Roy Chase. The sergeant fell for a heartbeat. There wasn't a heartbeat. The next second, the door burst open and the sergeant leaped to his feet. As the match went out, he recognized Jack. The Burley Hotel clerk had a blackjack in his right hand. The sergeant ducked the blow and counted with a right. It connected solidly, but Jack only grunted and swung again. The sergeant lashed out with right to left, trying to work his way to the open doorway. He reached it was out in the corridor when he heard steps behind him. Before he could turn, the barrel of a gun hit him behind the ear, and the black tide closed over him. Yeah. Roy picked himself a good body, guy. Yeah. He was bending over Roy when I came in the room. He knows he's dead. I should never have fired that shot. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Why, well, if it's after the police, Harry Cross had him for murder. Can't blame him for being a little sick on the trigger. Yeah, this guy. Had we put it to you? No, no, no. The dog punk is the only one who can get Harry on board the outer clean. What about after the boat sailed? I talk it over with Harry. He wants to make sure the dog puncher doesn't talk. He should pay us something extra. Yeah. Once they slayed him, tie the puncher's hands and feet and drag him inside the room. And get Roy out of here. Where? My room for the time being. Come on, hurry it up. The sergeant's first sensation when consciousness began to return was of a pain in his head. <laughs> then he tried to move and he realized there were rips around his ankles and his hands were tied behind his back. He was lying on the floor. Someone was lifting his head. Thank you. Feel better? He's ripped. Do you have a knife? In my pocket. Uh, I'm going to stand in the corridor and watch me. They'll be coming back in a minute. What's that? It's too late. They're coming now. Well, hello, man. There's a lamp on the table there. Okay. What's the girl doing here? I was wondering the same thing. Didn't you be downstairs? Bill's a friend of mine, Mark. I think you girls play a little rock. <laughs> it's his idea, and then ours. Where's the body? What body? This is room 17, isn't it? Yeah. Where's Roy Chase? Oh, Roy. Roy. <laughs> he had to leave, Bill. And he left word for you that he wouldn't be sailing on the Arctic Queen tonight. This is his friend, Harry Cross. He'll be the only passenger. My deal was with Roy. Harry yeah, will tell you. You take him to Skagway and see you to get the board. He'll decided that. Any objection? No. No, he hasn't any objection. <laughs> I didn't think so. But just in case, Jack and I are coming along. Hey, how much does this guy know? Harry wants to know how much you know, Bill. Roy agreed to pay me $500 to arrange passage on the Arctic Queen for two people. He agreed to pay me 100 for driving him over here tonight. <laughs> How do you think about his money, Bill? You'll be paid off after the job is done. Well, things I have no choice. There's nothing to do but accept your proposition. And now you're talking. You're coming with us, man. Am I? Wait a minute. I'll carry two passengers, no more, Harry, and one other person. Harry and me. Jack will be driving his own sled. Man could ride with him. Come on, Jack. Get the steam harness and drive it around in front. Right, boy. Keep an eye on Bill, Harry. And I am a gun. Good idea. Come on, man. Where? <laughs> hey, your room. You need your fur coat. When Jack returned from harnessing his team, he found the others ready to start. The sergeant was freed of his ropes and marched out of the hotel, a gun in his back. King was waiting at the bottom of the steps. The sergeant started down them. The dog caught the glint of metal in the hand of the man directly behind the sergeant. A pistol. There was something about the man that he didn't realize he was an enemy. He started up the steps. A command from the sergeant stopped him. Out of the way, Captain. King hesitated only a second. The sergeant was pointing. He turned and raced down the main street of Dye toward the Skagway Trail. <laughs> Continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. 
Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Pop wheat, Quaker Pop rice, Muppet shredded wheat, and Quaker Packle Ten, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. You get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Taco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. <laughs> to continue. Two hours later, the sergeant stopped his team in front of a warehouse on the Skagway in Waterford. Hurry, 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 hurry. Is the place? We go through the warehouse, not on the dock. Any more coming around? No. The warehouse is empty. Well, let's make it fast. Yeah, we've got to wait for Marion. Oh, All right, you. You and Marion go first, Jim. Just me.
return in just a moment for the word about our next exciting adventure. Here is a mutual note for you. Mutual is a network that has programs you can enjoy throughout the week. If you like question and answer fun, then you'll find there are all sorts of quiz programs you can listen to on Mutual. You can try and outguess the contestants and see if you know the right answer before they do. Even if you don't know, it's loads of fun listening to others. And you can learn a lot at the same time, too. And some of you boys and girls probably have favorite songs and favorite singers that you like to listen to. When you tune into Mutual, you'll hear many of the stars you like best, singing and playing the kind of music you enjoy most. Don't forget, too, there are programs of outdoor adventure and others of barn dance music and jamboree. There's plenty of good listening waiting for you on your Mutual dial. Tune in every weekday afternoon for mutual famous programs especially designed for adventure lovers. And remember to listen other times as well for different kinds of programs you like over most of these stations. And now, in the private office of a crooked mine broker named Pat Hinkley, a man named Flint Parker is speaking. Hinkley? How would you like to get in on the ground floor of a new gold track? <laughs> I'd like that real well, Parker. Real well. As who would it? All right, here's the bill. A young mining engineer named Joe Dryden has made a valuable strike somewhere in the mountains. He's brought back ore samples to prove it. He's drawn a map showing the location of the strike. He's talking. He's staying at the Victoria Hotel. If your men can break into his room tonight, they can get a hold of that map. <laughs> They'll do it, all right. That map will be in my hands before morning. Yes, a valuable gold map is at stake, and thieves are out to get possession of it. When Sergeant Preston enters the picture, he'll be facing plenty of trouble and possible death at the hands of ruthless gunmen. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell New Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.